What is up, my nieces and nephews? This is your Uncle Wheezy, and I am doing this video for DFS by the Numbers Patreon group to take you through the spreadsheets that I am going to be creating with Brady here going forward. So, uh, hopefully you can see my screen right here. This is Kevin Holland's stats, and I'll just kind of take you through. We do the same thing for every single fighter that's going to be fighting on a card. So we got all the information here for Kevin Holland that you could need. We got his birthday. We got his age. We got the length of his career. We have height, reach, stance, fight camp, and the date of their pro debut. So when I have the pro debut here, that, that goes up here to the length of career and days, and it just tells you how long their career is. I've got all this information. I've got the record. I've got the wins by finish. I've got the losses by finish, and I've got experience. And I do them um, as total UFC and other. So the UFC competition plus the other competition adds up to the total competition. So we can see that Kevin Holland has got a total of 27 fights, 21 wins, six losses. 12 of those wins are by KO or 57%. Five of those wins are by submission. When we add 12 and five, we get total of 17 finishes for 81%. And we do that for the wins and the losses, and we separate them by total, UFC, and other. We do the same thing for experience. Total cage time, UFC cage time, and then cage time outside of the UFC. And then this one over here, the average FT is just their average fight time. Outside of the UFC, inside the UFC, and total. Um, if we scroll down on the sheet here for Kevin, um, this is where I enter all of the information uh, all the previous opponents that he's had in order, um, we do the opponent's birthday, we do the date that the fight took place, we do the weight class that the uh, fight took place at, and then we've got a strength of schedule tool who, that is really cool here. And the way that this works is, is it tells you for the wins, the losses, and the draws and no contests for a fighter... <laughs> Uh, if just for instance here, we see that uh, Holland's most recent fight was against Derek Brunson. Uh, Derek Brunson's birthday is January 4th, 1984, and the date that the fight took place is March 20th, 2021. It took place at middleweight, and since Kevin Holland lost the fight, we go into the strength of schedule tool, and we put in Derek Brunson's overall record in the UFC. He is a 13-5 and fighter in the UFC. So we put that in there and you'll see as we go down, we add up all the winning and lo losing records of the fighters that they have fought over the course of their career. Then we add up all those numbers and it goes up here into the strength of schedule area. The strength of schedule is broken down by all the fights, the total, the wins and the losses. So um, we can see here that the overall record of all the opponents that Kevin Holland has fought in the UFC outside of their fights with Kevin Holland, they have a total record of 56 and 38. So the average wins of a fighter that Kevin Holland has fought is 4.67 and the average losses is 3.17. So that just tells you Kevin Holland over his, uh, we've got how many fights for Kevin Holland? We've got 12 UFC fights in his 12 UFC fights. The average record of the fighter that he's fighting is 4.67 wins and 3.17 losses. The TF up here is total fights and RTO is ratio. And I use this ratio as a good little indicator here of the strength of schedule of a fighter. You can see that overall, Kevin Holland has fought fighters who have a 1.47 to 1 ratio of wins to losses in their career. So if we do this here and we see that of his one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine wins, if we add up the records, we see that his opponents had 29 wins and 33 losses in his wins. Now, the fights that he lost, his opponents had a combined record of 30 and 14. So you can see here that what will usually happen is you'll beat worse fighters than you lose to. So you see that the overall ratio is 1.47 to 1, but the ratio of wins to losses is 1.21. So in his, the fights that he's won, his opponents have about 1.2 wins for every loss. And in the fights that he's lost, 
You can see that he's lost to Derek Brunson, Brendan Allen, and Tiago Santos, three very good fighters. So when you add up their three records, you get 30 wins and 14 losses. When you take off the three wins that they had against Kevin Holland, we subtract that down to 27 and 14. And we see that the fights that Kevin Holland lost, total wins 27, total losses 14 for an average record of, four, of nine wins and 4.67 losses. So we know that when uh, Kevin Holland is losing fights, he's losing fights to quality fighters. Um, so we do this for every single fight. We get the win-loss we have the amount of rounds that the fight took. We have the cage time in seconds. We have the control time for Kevin Holland in the, in the CT column here. And the CTA column is the control time allowed. So against Derek Brunson, you could see Kevin Holland had 107 seconds of control time. And he gave up 1,015 seconds of control time. And then we just do the striking stats. Uh, here we got significant strikes, significant strikes attempted. Total strikes, knockdowns, takedowns, takedowns attempted, advances, reverses, submissions. And we do that for every fight that they've had. And we total them up. You get the win points for DraftKings here. You get the fan duel points. And then we also have what their opponents did against them further off to the right over here. All those totals get summed up. And we bring them up here to these statistics where we have striking offense, striking defense. So you can see here Kevin Holland in his UFC career has landed 573 significant strikes. He has attempted 1,015 for a striking accuracy of 56.45%. He averages landing 4.14 significant strikes a minute, and he throws 7.34 significant strikes per minute. This KD divided by TSSL here equals the knockdowns over the total significant strikes landed. So if we take however many knockdowns he had, and we can find that number right here, he's had three total knockdowns in the UFC. If we take three and we divide that by 573, the amount that he's landed, we see a knockdown percentage of 0.0052%. And we have all these numbers for offense and defense. We've got grappling offense, grappling defense. The grappling stats here are takedowns, uh, 10 total takedowns for Kevin Holland in his career, 22 attempted for 45.45%. He averages 1.08 takedowns per 15 minutes. He averages 0.65 submission attempts, and his control time is 17.84% of the seconds that he's in the cage. And we can see that Kevin Holland's opponents have completed 25 of 52 takedowns against him for 51.92%. They averaged 2.71 takedowns attempted or uh, completed against him and 1.08 submissions. And we can see that Kevin Holland gets controlled about 34% of the time while he only controls his opponents 17.84. So we also have DraftKings offense and defense numbers here. The first column here is a, is a metric that I created called work rate per minute. The work rate is your DraftKings points scored independent of wins and losses. So there's no win and loss points in here. Um, it's just how many DraftKings points you score per minute that you're in the cage. If you want to know how many DraftKings points they score per fight, that is the last column here in the DraftKings offense. And you can see that Kevin Holland averages 82.32 DraftKings points per fight. And we have that for both offense and defense on DraftKings and FanDuel. Um, the SWR per minute here is just how many points of that work rate come from striking. That's 77% of the work rate is, uh, is achieved by the striking uh, totals for Kevin Holland. And 0.79 points per minute he scores with grappling, and that's 23% of his total. That will always add up to one. Um, so if we go down here to the other tabs that we have in the spreadsheet, we've got the DraftKings and the FanDuel tabs. And I've cut and pasted all the information from the first uh, spreadsheet into here. We have the salary. We have the exposure that we're planning on uh, having them in our lineup. So if we're doing multiple lineups, we can kind of use this tool to look at, you know, we can see who's scoring a lot of DraftKings points per minute. We see Kevin Holland, 3.49. Vittori, 3.2. Yusuf, 3.65. Arnold Allen, only 2.37. 
Somebody like uh, Kizrayev who only has one fight and it was in the contender series and he whacks that dude's ass. So we see that he's got 9.34. That's going to come back down to earth. So we use these work rates to kind of determine whether somebody is active in the cage or not. We could take somebody uh, like Sam Alvey, who's been a notoriously inactive fighter, and we could see that he only scores 1.98 DraftKings points per minute, while somebody like Joe Selecki here scores 5.28. So, you know, we can use this sheet to kind of target fighters that are a little more active in the cage, fade fighters that are a little less active in the cage. And when we go up a little further here, we can also see uh, the defensive numbers of people. And we want to avoid um, picking fighters against uh, opponents that have a good defense because they're not going to score a lot of points. We can see somebody like Marvin Vittori here. While he scores 3.2 DraftKings points per minute, he only allows 1.87. So, you know, this, this is a pretty good little tool here if we want to find out you know, not only who's scoring points, but who's allowing a f you know, few points. Joe Selecki only only allowing 0.69 points per minute in DraftKings. Um, the last uh, co two columns here are totals. And what I do here for the WR total is this is just the addition of the... Uh, so, for, for instance, here we've got the total 6.65 for Kevin Holland. That is... His work rate per minute, 3.49, plus his work rate allowed per minute, 3.16. And when we add those two numbers together, we can get, a, we can get an idea of not only who's being active in the cage, but who's also um, hittable and who's also scorable on. And we want to kind of try to avoid the fights that have the lower work rate total. And we want to kind of try to concentrate a little more on the fights where you see that fighters are not only a little more active, but maybe a little bit worse defensively. So I know that this is a lot of information here, but you can use this if you really are into stats, you know, you can use this to kind of try to find paths to victory. And I'll just use one little example here. Uh, Brady went off on a little tirade on his video uh, the other day talking about the Mackenzie Dern, um, Nina Ansaroff fight. And for those of you who think that Mackenzie Dern is going to take down Nina Ansaroff and have some success against her, you know, we can take a look at Nina Ansaroff right here. We've got her numbers and we can look at her grappling defense and we can see that her opponents have only landed 11 out of 49 takedown attempts against her for 77.55% takedown defense. And then if we go down and we look at Nina Ansaroff's list of opponents here, we can see that, you know, uh, the last three fights, Tatiana Suarez, Claudia Gadelia, and Randa Marcos, those are three grapplers. We know that they tried to take down Nina. And we can go over here to see what Nina gave up. And she gave up four out of three take, four out of 13 takedowns here to Tatiana Suarez. She only gave up two out of 10 to Gadelia and only one out of 11 to Marcos. And then we can go down to, um, we can go down to Mackenzie Dern's stats here. And we could say, okay, well, if, you know, if Nina has really good takedown defense, let's see what Mackenzie Dern's takedown offense is here. Well, we can see over Mackenzie Dern's six UFC fights, she's attempted 18 takedowns and only completed one. So if you're of the, if you're of the opinion, you know, that Mackenzie Dern's going to go in there, take down, answer off, and submit her, you know, the statistics are telling you a little bit different of a story. And that's why if you want to do a little bit higher level analysis when you are looking at this stuff, you know, you can, you can take a deeper dive into the statistics. And sometimes it'll paint a picture for you that is a little bit different than what you thought the fight was going to go. And data, you know, data can be misleading sometimes, but it very rarely lies. So I hope that you guys can use this information to make some better decisions going forward gambling. And I hope that we can all make some serious money. And I'm really excited to be on the DFS by the numbers team, uh, sharing my advanced statistics uh, model here with Brady. I, I want to make some money with you guys. If you have any questions about this video, always feel free to holler at me in Brady's Discord. I practically live in there. Um, you can DM me. Uh, I am Wheezy in uh, the Discord. Feel free to ask me any questions in there. I'm always available in there. And uh, if you have any suggestions going forward about how I can improve the spreadsheets or if you have any requests on additional statistics that you'd like me to keep for you guys, just let me know. I'm here to help you guys. Thank you for listening. I hope we all get to make some money uh, together going forward, and I am looking forward to being a part of this team. Good luck, everybody.